So this is my Axis Flying Cineon uh, build that I completed a little while ago. Um, it's the combo that comes with these C224 motors, uh, which are the 2300 kV. Um, I use this on 4S and 6S, depending on what type of flights I want to make. Um, the frame is really sturdy and robust. I have had it fail safe on me once, which I'll place a little video for you on. Um, and it landed perfectly, no damage at all. Uh, and it was from quite a height, dropped through some pine trees. Took me two trips uh, in a matter of two days to find the unit first, and then I went back and found the battery, which uh, ejected. Um, flown it again after that. Um, I suspected it was a soldering issue uh, at first, so I ripped it apart and resoldered everything with a higher temperature. Um, and then I found out that I flew, I flew another model over the exact same trees, and I got two fail safes, and I was only less than 100 meters away from it. There's a cell tower very close to the same area that I think has a line of sight um, beam that goes over those trees. So I don't think it was a soldering issue. It was a fail safe because of interference. I'll show you how that went down in a bit. But the main reason for today's little video is to show you what I'm planning to do with this thing. Um, now that the DJI 03 unit is out, I see there are on Thingiverse TPU printouts for a GPS and also the DJI 03 camera. Um, I don't have a spare DJI 03 unit to put in here, so uh, I took that um, print or model and I modified it, uh, sliced the back off because I think the original GPS that it was made for was a BN220 or 180, um, and I modified it for this Flywoo GM10 Mini V3 which is on the new Flywoo Explorer. And these things work so well. A uh, couple of seconds, you've got five sets and they say it goes up to 30. I've never got it up to 30. Um, don't think you need 30 at all, uh, but that's what they say. Um, this is the mount that was originally made off Thingiverse. Uh, I sliced the O3 piece off and then I just extended these to make them a lot more uh, robust than the one that comes with uh, the Cineon. I find this a little bit too flimsy. Um, I also battled to get it to face straight because once you tighten one of these screws on either side, it sits uh, all skew. Um, and eventually, after a lot of tightening, I got it semi straight. But this will be a lot more rigid uh, and also give you a little bit of flexibility to get rid of some of that jello. Uh, to give you full information about the specs on this build, um, it's a 3.5 inch frame, um, not properly ducted uh, in terms of airflow in there, it's more for protection. Um, very similar to the Gepar C Cinelog 35. I did buy that frame originally and personally this is a hell of a lot stronger than that. Um, I custom built that one and while I was testing it, it fell out the sky and fell about a meter of my ground and the whole frame here cracked. So I aborted that and just moved on to something else that works. The flight controller here is a HAKRC all-in-one board. That's a F22 um, model, four-in-one 40 amp BL Heli S ESC, uh, which is two to six S capable. Really great flight controller in terms of specs. It's got five UARTs. It's fully iNav compatible. There's a firmware available. Got the compass pads. Um, for the price, it's great. Um, yet to see how reliable it actually is compared to your Mumbers or uh, that type of brand. Um, and then paired with the combo of Axis Flying Motors, which look really good. Uh, I like the red and the black design on the top. Um, the motor windings are nice and solid. They've got a pretty smooth feel to them. Um, and also paired with the Gemfan D90 3.5 inch props here. There's not very much available in the 3.5 inch prop range uh, that I can find. I know there's, uh, I think, HQ prop, um, but they only come in gray as well. I do like my colors. And these ones also are pretty difficult to get colors in. I know there's gray, this, and uh, maybe white, I don't know. Uh, I also paired it with the Foxeer 5.8 gig uh, lollipop antenna. It's 150 millimeters in length to get way over your battery and uh, 
get really good range um, and a full crossfire Mortal T antenna uh, with your TBS crossfire nano which I mounted here underneath nice and easy to get to the bind button and will never get in the way of the props um, of course we've got a Nebula Nano or Nebula Pro camera with your Vista um, at the bottom a couple other things I'd like to mention about this is that uh, it's got the toilet tank design battery bay which you can really put a nice solid large capacity battery on it and this frame with these motors uh, can easily handle a full-size GoPro um, I do have a full-size GoPro but I also have a um, Insta360 GO 2 as well as a naked GoPro uh, 9 Black so I don't really put a full GoPro on here because I don't have to but it can easily fly these around This frame uh, disassembly is so easy. It's six screws, two at the back, two up at the front, one on each side, and you just lift up like that. And then what you can do is just unplug your Vista or DJI O3 from here, and you've got two separate pieces all together. I'm gonna do that and then get closer into these components. So here's our flight controller. Uh, which as I mentioned I resolded for a second time uh, really really well um, this company HAKRC uh, says what do they say here PCB adopts high-end eight layer thick copper skin which I did find quite difficult to solder the first time and when I had that fail safe or what I thought was um, a power out because I was hitting too much throttle and I thought maybe it uh, didn't pull enough current from the battery connector I went and found the quad and ripped it apart took the fire controller out completely and resoldered at 400 plus degrees Celsius as opposed to my normal 350 and that seemed to go on like butter um, I've since then flown it with 6 and 4s and give it some really I've given it some really good bursts of power um, and haven't had any issues but I'll show you in the video as mentioned how this thing fell out the sky um, and on two occasions over the exact same trees I've had fail safes and not from far distance at all and I'll show you the towers which I'm pretty sure are responsible as well so these TPU designs are, are really great um, it's got a little cut at the, at the front here, uh, so you can actually slide your antenna in and out of it quite easily. Um, you still need to disconnect it uh, from the UFL on your Vista, as you won't be able to get this head through easily without maybe damaging it. Uh, so you do need to disconnect from here and then slide this back into the new one. Um, it also has a design here, which I assume should have been for the uh, receiver of choice. I didn't put it in here. I put it on the arm, as shown earlier. And then it's got a much more robust um, TBS or um, ELRS antenna holder at the top. So this is the old mount, which has been removed. The new mount uh, puts the camera significantly further forward than this one. I much prefer that. It's still not in front of the guards. Um, gets your camera further out uh, so you can see a little bit more of the action. Um, I guess I could have put it a little bit further in, uh, but this is going to do perfectly fine. So this is the cable that came with the Flywoo GM10 Mini V3 uh, GPS. Um, seems to be silicon cables, we'll soon find out when we sold it to the flight controller. And uh, talk about going cheap on the copper shielding that they've given you. I have to try and slice that in two so I can actually extend it long enough between the GPS and flight controller. Uh, one length isn't exactly going to give you all the shielding you need, so we'll see if we can get as much as we need to the actual flight controller itself. Sliced in two. Slight twist of the cables, which apparently helps with interference. And we're going to see whether we can wrap those. Uh, small strips of copper around each piece and we'll do a dual wrap here so if anyone hasn't done this before um, what I've decided to do in terms of best strategy so I don't waste and mess these two pieces up the guys who are used to rolling joints might get this done better than others but uh, I just lifted up this adhesive 
uh, sheet of copper and slid this in and from here you can actually start rolling this over your um, cable right so we're on the perfect portion over here I've led the copper all the way up to the end of the cable and you take your Rizzler right I don't suggest licking this one so of course the pads that I want to use for the um, GPS would be located all the way on the far side of the flight controller up here. I'm going to go for UART, I guess, 4, uh, R4 and T4, uh, which means I'm going to use this entire length of the cable they've given me, which give me a little bit of slack. Yep. So just looking at the pinouts here, we've got ground, TX, RX, and 5 volt. Um, laid out my cables here on how they'll go onto this flight controller, ground, 5 volt, and then TX and RX will obviously be swapped. Um, so now we're going to tin these puppies up, and then we're going to solder these on, and then start connecting everything back into the frame. Damn, those pads are small. Right, just make sure we're not touching anything else. Uh, I did bridge those by mistake because they were too small, but a little swipe between the pads fixed that, no problem. And we're back in one piece. So put the six screws back on, made sure there were no cables tying or squashing or anywhere else. Um, fed the GPS cable that we built through this little hole and then flipped it out underneath and clipped it into the little provided clip uh, uh, connector. If they had made this cable two millimeters shorter, it would not have worked. Uh, what I could have done is not uh, twisted the cable as much and given myself a little bit more space, but that's pretty tight. Um, I would have liked them to provide a cable with at least three to four to five uh, centimeters longer distance. I mean, this is about as short as you get unless your UARTs are at the back of the flight controller here. But if you're talking a five inch build and your flight controller is sitting in the middle of one of the bigger frames, you're in a little bit of trouble. You need to buy a new cable or you need to extend each piece of that cable, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, so pretty bad show on that. So there's our finished product. Uh, loaded with Betaflight 4.4, GPS rescue enabled uh, and working. Um, set up default uh, PIDs and rates, etc. Um, I'm very keen to go give this a test run. Um, unfortunately, the rains and weather in New Zealand are absolutely terrible at the moment, and I haven't had a chance to fly for quite a while. So what I'm going to do is just end this video off with uh, that flight footage I said I would, uh, where I lost signal uh, to what I'm pretty sure was those cell towers. Um, and uh, let me know your thoughts on whether you agree that those cell towers are what's to blame. Perhaps they're not cell towers and maybe they're just point-to-point -point wireless uh, access points. So I was flying across a bit of a difficult area to retrieve a quad if you lost it area. And... Um, I had no idea this would happen because, well, it's an easy flight because it's not far away from me. Maybe three, four hundred meters max. And this was the first test flight after a hover that I'd done on the Cineon 35. And as you come across these pine trees, you'll see. Yep. One, two. Done. And that's all I had in my... Um, Goggle feed dropped.